Hi, I'm Debbie McKinnon, and I've been thinking an awful lot lately about why I draw things. And I think it basically comes down to the fact that I need to create my own really unique visual language. Um, I don't want to just reproduce something that lots of other people have reproduced in the past. And so to that end, I like to really make my own crazy mark making tools. They're mine, they make marks in my way. And I'd really encourage all of you to try and find your own way with this sort of thing. It's so good to be experimental and not make marks that everyone else is making. You know, you want to have your own visual language, very, very important. When I'm drawing, I'm really visualizing what I see in my imagination. And these kind of tools help me so much with, you know, what I might put down on the page. You know, I'm a painter and all my paintings start with a drawing, although not every drawing ends up with a painting. Um, sometimes I just like doing the drawings because they help stimulate my imagination. They make me remember a place really well. And, and I found that mark making, particularly with things that I've picked up on location, um, that ties me to place again. It helps me really remember where I've been and what I've been doing. So I'm hoping you'll have a go. I've got a bit of a demo coming up now of how I use these tools. I like to be really experimental with my mark making. So I've made all kinds of mad tools. They're not fancy. I've literally just used bits of masking tape to wrap around sticks and work with things that I've just found out of my walks. Uh, sometimes I didn't even have any string or anything with me, but I just used a bit of old grass that I've picked up in order to make my tools. Sometimes they've gone a little bit fancier with the um, with the, the wrapping and binding but each stick or each thing that I found this is a piece of um, a dried palm leaf that I've trimmed down into kind of a fabulous pen or I've stuck pieces of charcoal onto very very long sticks because a very very long stick is going to make a different kind of mark to a very small stick I mean I've got just simple sticks I've picked off the ground but I've done nothing to them um, but I like to have different sizes, like here's a big piece of bamboo, for example. Feathers make fantastic um, drawing implements. I find all sorts of interesting seeds and bits of stuff on the ground. I like this one. It's like a funny old dried, huge pod. Bits of driftwood are very nice, very light to hold. Uh, sometimes I just like to stick a brush uh, using some masking tape. I'll do one in a minute just so things are at a funny angle. And I've actually always loved using um, old toothbrushes because they can make really, really interesting marks and actually little rollers as well. So all of these things can start to make very, very interesting, exciting marks. I like to ask myself, what if kind of questions? What if I took this bent stick and I stuck this brush onto it? What kind of mark would I then be making? So I'd like to try things out. It's very simple to do, literally just stick one thing to another, <laughs> something you found, something you've already got, with some tape. I'll just secure it like this. Done. Now I've got ink. And I've got water and I'm going to see what happens because I'm not drawing a line it's not coming I'm drawing it slightly awkwardly because my hand is coming at an angle that I'm not expecting what happens if I spray it I'm not worrying about drawing anything right now. I'm just making marks. So I've got ink here, black ink, acrylic ink, and I've got water. Um, I find that I need both to make marks. So I'm dipping my crazy mark making tool into the ink and into the water and maybe back into the ink. I've got no idea what marks he's going to make. Now, 
little marks, big marks. And I'm going to try this funny old um, dried bean pod. Try it in different ways. Holds the ink quite well. I like the lighter line as well as the thicker line. Now I'm going to try this one. I find dipping them in water and ink seems to help the ink stay longer onto the mark making tool. But I quite like it as the ink starts to run out and you get lighter lines happening. Twisting my hand, seeing what I can get, what can happen. You can't do this wrong because you're just trying out ideas. What will happen with this one? Oh yeah. And these kind of experiments also, once they're dry, you can use them, use the dry pages, tear them up and make amazing collage to go in other drawings. Now you don't want all your lines to be the same width the same density. This is quite a good one. Made of dried grasses I picked up somewhere. And what could you imagine that becoming? You know, could it be leaves on a tree? Could it be a texture on a rock? I don't know. Could be all kinds of things. Here's a sea sponge that I've taped onto a piece of bamboo that I found. The possibilities seriously are endless. Here's a feather. What's my feather going to do? Here's this pen that I made from from the dried palm. I like the multiple lines. Deliberate distinct and definite lines. It's all about losing a bit of control. <laughs> what if, what if I mixed it with this? What would I get? What if I made marks with this oil pastel? And then I put ink over the top of it. Ooh, yeah. What if I use more water?
What if I use my little roller here, dipping it in water to get it wet, get some ink onto it. Can I make lines with this? This may look like crazy scribble, but actually it's going to be fantastically useful as um, collage pieces. You can see that my lines are quite interesting and varied. I just rip these up. I keep them in, in bags and then they become really quite interesting pieces for me to use later in other drawings. So nothing's wasted. Don't feel that you've, you know, you've done all this mark making and it's completely w wasted. It's not. You can keep on using it. All the marks you've made are your mark and you're able to use it in all sorts of other ways.